Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this last video on the time value of money, we're going to look at calculating the effective interest rate. And you might be thinking, great, let's do it, but um, wait, what is the effective interest rate? So let's talk about what that is. If you have an option between two loans or accounts, you might want to know this effective interest rate or the annual yield. Basically what it is, is it takes a compound interest rate and converts it into a simple interest rate that would yield the same future value over one year as that given compound interest. So if you have one account that's offering 4.2% compounded weekly versus 4.23% compounded semi-annually, you would be able to take those two values and figure out what their equivalent simple interest rate is. So it's taking something that's a compound interest rate and converting it to a simple interest rate for one year. To calculate this effective rate, we use this formula. E, the effective rate, is equal to one plus R over N to the N minus one. N is the number of times that the interest is compounded annually and R is the interest rate per year. So you'll notice here when we're calculating this that we don't include the time and that's because the time is going to be one year, so T would be one. And this thing here, this minus one, what that's doing is that's subtracting out the amount invested or the amount borrowed. That's all it's doing. So it's just switching it and that would be the amount you would be, you know, if it's $10,000 or $5,000 and it's just getting rid of that, just making it so that it's just a single simple interest rate, no matter what. Uh, and the last thing that we might want to do when we calculate this, it's going to give that interest rate as a decimal. So at the very end, you might want to multiply by 100 to convert it to a percent because as is, it's not going to be the percent form. It's going to be its equivalent decimal. With these, there is a lot of calculations. So I suggest getting a calculator handy. Let's look at an example. Which is a better investment, 3% compounded monthly or 3.05% compounded semi-annually? So I encourage you, pause the video, see if you can figure out which one's better, and see if you agree with me. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the formula. So E is equal to 1 plus R over N to the N minus 1. Now, talking about the 3% compounded monthly, in this case, let's define our variables. The interest rate is 0.03, right? That's taking 3% and dividing it by 100. And the number of times it compounds in a year is monthly, so that's 12. So plugging this in, the effective rate here would be 1 plus 0.03 over 12 to the 12th minus 1. And then if we do this in the calculator, we end up somewhere along the lines with I get 3.042%. And again, that's taking the value and multiplying it by 100. Okay, compared to the compounded semi-annually, so this one is 3.05% compounded semi-annually. In this case, R is 0.0305. And semi-annually, that means twice a year, so N is 2. Plugging this in, we get E is equal to 1 plus 0 0.0305 divided by 2. This will be squared, minus 1. And when we do that in the calculator, I end up getting 3.073%. So which one is a better deal? The 3.05% compounded semi-annually. So this is the better deal. That's the one that I would want to go with. Assuming this is an investment. If this is a loan, I might want to go with the 3% because that would be less. All right. So again, what is this saying? This is saying that this would be the equivalent simple interest rate. This is the equivalent simple interest rate. So that would be a better simple interest rate. Okay. Last example, again, I encourage you pause the video, see if you get the same uh, answers as me. So again, the first thing I'm gonna do is write down the formula. Ooh, my screen is going nuts. Let's try that again. Oh, that's better. To the N minus one. Okay, so we have 4% compounded quarterly, 4% quarterly that would be an interest rate of 0 0.04, and quarterly is the same thing as four, right? That's four times a year. So we would have E is equal to one minus 0 0.04 divided by four to the fourth minus one. Ooh, that's gonna be a really nice number. And that should be a plus sign. It looks like a minus sign because my computer's bugging out. Okay, so when we do that, 
um, I end up getting 4.060401, so basically 4.06%. And so that would be the equivalent simple interest rate for one year. Okay, how does that compare to the 3.98% compounded daily? Woo. All right, so the interest rate here is 0 0.0398, and N is 365, regardless of whether it's a leap year, we always use 365. Okay, so plugging in, we're going to have 1 plus 0 0.0398 divided by 365, raised to the 365th power, minus 1. And when we calculate this, I end up getting 4.06003. So basically, it's identical. They're, they're pretty much the same. You can't go wrong with either one. If you want to be a little more precise, this one is ever so slightly better, right? Because this is... 604, this is 6003. So in this case, they're almost exactly the same. If it's an investment, I would go with the 4% quarterly. If it's a loan, I might go with the 3.98% daily. This has been a lesson on effective interest rates. Thank you for stopping by.